What I'm kind of trying to say here, or what I'm getting at, is take a Nike ad to heart and just do it. I need to cut that out. Hey guys, it's Shaylin, and I'm here today with another writing video. Today I've got a discussion video. Today I wanted to talk about a problem in the writing community that I have talked about before, but I felt that it deserved its own video because I have so many things to say. I'm a vessel full of opinions and I feel a need to share them. Now, I just want to be clear, this is not hashtag author tube tea. Nothing that I'm talking about in this video is related to a single thing that another person in the community has said or done whatsoever. None of this is about other creators. This is something that I talked about in my video problems I have with the writing community that I made in like the fall of 2018 and it started some shit. I honestly have absolutely no desire in contributing to that anymore because I've kind of just, I've said my piece. This is coming back to how I actually interact with my own audience, the things that I see in my own audience. And this isn't a call out, this is like a reach out. And I, all my little writer ducklings are really anxious and they're all freaking out around me and I wanna help them. This is a problem, but it's not a call out, so cool down. I wanted to talk about a problem in the writing community that is a problem because it's making you all so scared to write. I feel like it's the biggest way that the writing community is counterproductive. This is, there's a lot of positivity, but I think there's this unintended consequence where people are becoming paralyzed by the, I guess what I would call distant mentorship. I know I've become a bit of a mentor to a lot of people, but it's not like the way that you would have a mentor with someone that you personally know. I think there's this misunderstanding in the online writing community about how writing advice works. That has turned into a misunderstanding about what writing craft is and how we should approach our own craft. For a little bit of background, if you only follow me on the, this platform, so I have a Tumblr blog. Yes, I know. The reason I started my blog is because about four years ago, my YouTube channel was starting to gain traction. As my YouTube channel gained traction, people started to ask me questions in the YouTube comments and I would take my time and I would write out answers. And I kind of felt like those answers were just kind of getting lost in the shuffle. I felt like I should probably find a different place where people could ask me questions if they had them, just for the ease of people being able to find those questions later on in case they had the same one. So I felt that Tumblr was the best way to do this because it has a very convenient ask feature. I really love running my blog and I really enjoy answering people's questions, but I get a lot of them. A lot of them are great questions, really valuable things to talk about. A lot of them are just kind of fun, but there are a lot of questions that I get that it's become a pattern for me to get these questions that are looking for answers that do not exist. And the problem here is that I think because we have this culture of a writing community where there are mentors out there, people you can reach out to, I've somehow become one of them, it's so easy to get answers now. This is coming back to this reason why people like hate millennials and they're like instant gratification culture, but an unintended consequence of this setup of our online writing community is that people have such easy access to information, they feel like there's there's always an answer. People are looking for a formula, they're looking for tips, they're looking for an answer for every tiny specific problem they have when it, it doesn't exist. And I think it's turned into this misunderstanding of what craft is. Craft is understanding the fundamentals of how stories work. It's like, it's like the laws of physics. Just say that I knew anything about physics, which I, don't. Let's say that I was a physics YouTuber, <laughs> the farthest thing from, and I had my blog and people asked me questions about physics. The valuable questions are when people would say like, hey, can you explain to me how a nuclear reactor works? Because I don't really understand it. Can you explain to me like what acceleration is? Those would be valuable questions because they're answering the fundamentals of what physics is. They're, they're answering those rules, that baseline. Maybe this analogy doesn't hold up. I'm not a physicist. Yikes. In terms of writing, the fundamental crap. But then you would get questions where people would be kind of just sending questions from their physics homework, where they're like, so if a train is going this many kilometers per hour and blah, 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 and they're carrying a load of this much, you know, what, whatever. I don't know. I can't make up a physics problem. I'm, 
I have a degree in writing. Those questions, people are now coming to me because they think she answers questions about physics, so she can help me answer this question about physics. But what's really happening now is that this person is, instead of taking the opportunity to learn, to apply the rules, to apply the theory and learn and make those, find those answers themselves, they're just going to someone else. It concerns me that people are turning to me, and, and not just me, but I'm just speaking from my experience, but turning to others for answers that they should be finding themselves. I will get questions from people that that person could have Googled the question and gotten an answer in five seconds rather than waiting four days for me to reply with a one-line answer. Like people will ask me things like, how many words are in a short story? Dude, like you could Google that and it would be way more efficient. And I'm not trying to shame those people, but people's instinct has become, I'll ask this mentor who I don't even have a personal relationship with, but I'll ask her because she's there. And I think she has the capability to provide me any answer I need. I don't. And it's not just that, yeah, there are answers I can't provide you because my breadth of knowledge on writing is so limited. Like, I get a lot of questions from people about aspects of writing that I've, I know nothing about. So I'm like, I don't know why you're asking me this. Genres I don't write. They'll be like, how do I write a thriller? I'm like, I don't know, dude. And I'm not trying to blame the people because I'm trying to blame the system that's leading people to this behavior. But it's like people are afraid to critically think. They're afraid to try to answer that physics problem in their homework themselves. They're scared to mess up. They're scared that it's going to be hard. These kinds of questions are things like it every day. How do I write a character description in second person? I don't know. You just kind of have to do it. You have to work through the problem. I had a writing professor during my degree who would always say, writing is problem solving. And I think that the extreme access to infinite information has led people to feel that instead of writing being problem solving, writing is answer seeking from others. Writing tips are great. A lot of them are, you know, just kind of a fun little shortcut or a little cosmetic thing. Writing tips are not what writing craft is based on. This is, I guess, like one of the big misunderstandings. People think that writing craft is all about becoming a good writer and knowing the craft is about collecting collecting writing tips. Gotta catch them all. That's not what writing craft is. Like I said, writing craft is about understanding those fundamentals of how a story works, understanding the theory, and then you can apply it to any situation you encounter. It's not opening up your filing cabinet and going, which specific writing tip pertains to this very specific situation that I am writing. Writing is about problem solving. It's about having the tools, and ultimately, there aren't that many tools. There are less tools than you probably think there are. My writer toolkit isn't a bunch of tiny little very specific screwdrivers for every possible type of scene like it's it's the fundamentals it's understanding point of view it's understanding characterization it's understanding structure but it's not how do I structure a story with seven point of views in a fantasy world with two separate timelines taking place you know I can answer that question for myself in my specific situation because I understand the theory. I can take the tools and know which ones I need to apply. But there are no really specific tips for that situation. There isn't an answer for every specific situation or problem you encounter in writing already out there. You kind of have to create your own answer. If I could bring in another little analogy. Let's say that you're a painter. A skilled painter understands the techniques of painting. They know how to mix paint. You know, they know how to shade, they know perspective, they know color theory. I'm not an artist, so... Mm. And because they have all of these tools, these broad tools, they can paint basically whatever they want to paint. Imagine someone was a painter and they're trying to paint a cat and they've never painted a cat before. So instead of going, okay, well, I understand, you know, body proportions and I understand, you know, all of these different techniques, instead I'm just going to go to my painting teacher and say, how do I paint a cat? Well, you paint a cat the same way you paint anything else, by using your skills that you have developed. And the way you develop your skill is through problem solving. It's the act of problem solving that makes you a good writer. I don't want to be all, <laughs> when I was young, when I was a kid, I grew up writing without the internet. Partly because this writing community didn't really exist, but also I didn't get social media until my late teenagers. I didn't have Facebook till I was 18. I didn't have Twitter or Instagram till I was 17. AuthorTube didn't really exist. So when I was learning to write, when I was writing my first book, I was 13. It was me, myself, and I. I had no mentors. I had no one to ask. I would read articles about craft. 
that's kind of it. And when I encountered a problem in my book, instead of being like, oh my god, I don't know how to solve this, I need to go ask someone and find this specific answer, I just kind of worked through it. Because of this, I think I developed an independence as a writer that a lot of writers who grew up in the writing community online do not have and aren't building for themselves. And this isn't anything to do with me personally, this is just because of the situation in which I learned to write. I am a very independent writer. I love my writing workshop, I love working on a story with them and getting feedback from them, but once I've gotten the feedback from my workshop, I kind of can just go apply it. And sometimes, yeah, I don't know how, but I can work through that. I have a decisiveness that I think a lot of people who are, you know, asking me questions on my blog, they haven't built up this decisiveness. They're, they're scared to make decisions and that's really holding them back because you know what happens when you feel like there's a specific answer that you need before you can write? You're never gonna write because that answer doesn't exist. People are not writing because they're waiting for the answers, but for answers that literally aren't out there. You've got to create your own answers. When people send me, I think, questions, I think maybe they think that what I have that they don't have is knowledge. What I have that they don't have is decisiveness and a lack of fear. When I find a problem in my writing, sometimes I don't know how to solve it, but I can just keep working at it until I solve it by working at it. Sure, I might talk it through with, you know, a friend, but really, I know that how much can a stranger help me who doesn't know anything about my book? They can't really. I'm the only person who can help me. I don't want to devalue the importance of mentorship. Um, it can be so valuable. I've had some incredible writing mentors. I truly would not be where I am if I hadn't had those mentors. Some of my writing professors like who were great mentors to me, when I had a problem with my story and I went to talk about it with them, I wouldn't go, so this is the problem I'm having, and they wouldn't go, Shaylin, I've got some writing tips that will help you. The reason the mentors that I had who really were beneficial to my writing journey, and the reason they were so great is because rather than just give me writing tips and give me answers, they challenged me. They challenged me to think more expansively about what stories were. And instead of just giving me the answer, they pushed me towards opening my mind and finding the answer myself. I really think that sharing information is so important. And I'm not saying that the solution to this is for anyone like me who's uh, become a writing mentor or teacher to just disappear because I know that like I have this really privi privileged position where I've had access to a lot of great mentors and great resources and great classes on writing that a lot of people don't have access to. Getting a degree in writing is like extremely privileged thing to be able to do. But at the same time, I don't think people understand that when I make a video on point of view. Some of it is fundamental craft stuff that I learned in a class or that I read in an essay, but a lot of the time it's what you synthesize yourself. I would say that most of what you learn in a writing degree is information, conclusions that you yourself have to reach, information you have to find yourself through doing it. Most of what I learned in my degree, I learned writing stories, having them workshopped, applying the feedback, solving the problems myself, having to push myself to solve those problems, and also workshopping other people. Sure, I had the fundamentals, the craft stuff that I was taught in like the first two years of my degree, so that I could have the language to describe those problems in my own work and others, but actually learning how to do it is about doing it. I talk a lot about specificity as a writing technique. Specificity is fantastic adore it. Writing craft is actually very broad. You are learning these very broad techniques that then you can apply to specific situations, but you're not learning to deal with every single specific situation. You have to learn the basics and then figure out those specific situations for yourself. And if you don't challenge yourself to do that, you will not learn. Having the information is 5% of being a writer. Actually applying it is the other 95%. The knowledge is only so much if you don't apply it. A little piece of my footage got corrupted and I'm filming another video today, so I'm just quickly refilming this little bit. This is turning into a mess real quick. I was in a really good ranting headspace when I filmed the original take of this video, so it's hard to get back into that. The general feeling I get is that people want writing craft and their writing process to be clean. They want everything to be clear cut, they want it to be very black and white. You know, do this, then do this, then do this, there's your book. And it's just not like that. It's just not. Art will never be like that. The thing about writing is it is messy and it's circumstantial and writing being messy is a good thing. It might mean that you don't have all the answers given to you, but it means you have 
infinite freedom to do whatever you want. And the unfortunate thing here is that I think what I see is a lack of critical thinking skills in the writing community and not just a lack of critical skin thinking skills because I actually think that people have the skills to critically think but like a lack of willingness to critically think about things. I really don't want this to seem super holier than thou because I'm not trying to say oh my god I have critical thinking skills unlike everyone else because that's not the case because like I said I think this mindset is symptomatic of the writing community. It's not like I'm just better than everyone else. The fact that I was raised as a writer outside of this writing community and I've noticed that all the writers that I know who were raised as writers outside of this writing community have those critical thinking skills, they understand that writing is messy and they're not afraid to get their hands a little dirty. They understand that that's just how writing works whereas it seems like the people who were raised by this writing community kind of want their hands to be held a little bit. I'm not saying I can critically think just because of it. I'm so inherently wonderful. But I am inherently wonderful. Kidding. No, it's just because I was never given the opportunity to kind of have my hand held along the way. I just had to figure it out. I didn't have these resources available to me. So I didn't have any other choice. As much as it's great to have access to resources, at a certain point, if you have too much access, I think it comes back to haunt you. I think the way to see it ultimately is that writing craft isn't a set of answers, it's a set of tools. You need to learn how to use the tools rather than learning what the answers are. There are no answers, there are only tools that you yourself can then use to find the answer. You can make a 30 minute long video on an aspect of craft and people will still leave comments asking for another one as if there was more extra information that I was hiding. Like, trust me, if I make a video on a craft topic, that's really all I had to say on it. Craft isn't as vast as you might feel it is. Once you get those tools, you have to figure out what you want to build yourself and what it's going to look like and how you might use the tools you have to build it. Sure, you can look at other things other people have built and see how they use those tools to build the thing they built. And of course you have to practice the techniques of building and carpentry to learn how to build something, but ultimately if you want to build something, you have to just build it based on your vision. You can't be afraid to do the work. You can't be afraid to listen to your gut. You can't be afraid to just dive into it, you know? Things like character development, it's not just like a one, two, three. There's not really even a set end destination. You have to just be willing to work for it. Maybe an indeterminate way. That might seem scary, but that's what all art is kind of about, isn't it? Asking me for some people, and it's not just me, like there are other people who might ask someone else. I'm not obviously the one person that everyone comes to, but I'm just talking about my specific audience, have reached a place where asking me has become the default. I've got a problem with writing, I'll ask Shaylin. And yeah, I've made myself available, like I've put myself in that position. I'm not saying I, this isn't my fault. It just makes me sad because I see people holding themselves back by deciding, probably subconsciously, that the best thing to do when they encounter a problem is to shoot me and ask. Here's what you should do if you encounter a problem. First, you should Google it. <laughs> Second, you should try to work through it yourself. Third, you should talk about it with someone that you know. If all else fails, if you can't find the answer online, maybe it's because it doesn't exist, and then you can't just figure it out yourself, people that know your story can't help you, then maybe you want to ask someone like me. <laughs> Potential that I'll say, I don't know, dude, you gotta figure it out. I don't know if it's a fear of messing up. Like, it's a fear of, okay, I have this problem and I don't know how to fix it, so I'm just gonna not do anything until I know how to fix it. I get that. You can figure it out, like, you're capable of problem solving, but problem solving is a skill that you still need to practice and if you refuse to problem solve then you're not going to be able to problem solve and that's really what what writing is if you encounter a problem that's not a bad thing that's just what writing is there's probably not a writing tip in some article on someone's blog in someone's youtube video or in some craft book that can answer that problem for you that can solve that problem for you what can solve that problem for you is if you have the confidence to go okay i'm a writer i have these specific tools and i can use them to solve this i remember getting one that was like hey shaylin how do i write experimental fiction i don't know man it's experimental you've got to experiment i can't tell you this is how you should experiment now go off and experiment the whole point of experimental fiction is that it's experimental you've got to just do it
I just see that they've been put in a position where they feel extremely overwhelmed by the amount of information that they're bombarded with in the writing community. And I feel like another problem with this is that it almost holds people back from writing the story how they want it to be. Sometimes I'll get questions that are like very craft specific, but sometimes I get ones that are very situational specific. You know, hey, how do I write about like a first day of school for a kid who's just moved to like a new country and then they find out that they're a witch. When I get questions like that, it's almost sad because people feel like there's a right way, there's a single right way to write their story. Maybe I worry they're sacrificing how they would want their story to be because they feel like there's a right way to write it and a wrong way to write it. Like, the right way to write your story is how you want it to be. What do you want this character to be like? What, what, just what do you want? How do you want it to be? How do you envision it? There's no right or wrong answer in a lot of these cases. Stories are too specific for that. They're too individual for that. You're creating something you're proud of. Will you be proud of it if you're basing it around what you think you should do? I, I wouldn't be. I've never been proud of anything I've written that was guided by what I thought other people would want. Um, I got an ask the other day. Let me find it. This person was asking a question, but they started their ask by saying, Hey, I haven't sent in an ask in like a year. I decided to stop looking for answers all the time and just work without seeking input. I would recommend any writer to do that. Again, I don't want anyone to feel bad for sending me asks. I don't want you to feel like you're annoying me. I like answering asks. Say that if you feel like maybe this applies to you, like you have this fear, like you are indecisive and like you're always looking for answers rather than making them yourself. Challenge yourself to be more independent. Try to answer those questions yourself before you turn to someone like me. You're gonna improve so, so much more if you can gain that skill. It might be difficult, I'm not saying that that's easy, but writing, I've never said that writing is easy. Like, it's not always easy to work through these problems, but it's not difficult because you're missing some whatever writing tip. I promise you, I have had many points in my draft where I was like, this is a problem. No tip, no note that I had taken at a class helped me work through those problems. I just had to work through it in a way that was specific and particular to my story. Okay, here are the pieces I'm working with. What can I do to make this work? It saddens me when I see people so held back by the, the culture of this community. It's sad, I think, because they're doing their best. You know, like these, these writers, mostly young writers, I think, are, are doing what they think what makes sense to do. You know, they're, they're seeking more information, which is such a good thing to do. You know, they're actively trying to learn, which is incredible. It's maybe just led them to believe that writing and craft works a bit of a different way than it really does. You don't always need the answers to start writing. You just need the desire and the willingness to answer the questions as you encounter them. That sounded pretty freaking inspirational. Hi everybody, quick aside, I just finished wrapping up this video and I'm cleaning up my stuff. I just wanted to say one thing real quick. I don't want anyone to leave this video feeling ashamed. Like if you are listening to this video and you feel, sorry, this is such an awkward way to film. <laughs> I'm literally just like crouched in front of my tripod. What I'm saying you feel applies to you. I'm not trying to say like you should feel bad about this. I want to inspire you to feel like you're more capable than you feel you are because I think this problem is coming back to people who they don't feel capable and so they're looking for answers rather than doing but you are capable I'm making this video so that if you feel like this is about you you have the confidence to go out and solve those problems yourself because you you can do it so thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions you can send me an ask on tumblr but try to solve them yourself first because That'll make you a better writer in the long run. Um, but I still love talking to y'all, so don't feel bad about it if you want to ask me something. But I might redirect you to this video if I feel like you're falling into this camp, not as a way of scolding you, but as a way of like trying to show you that the answer is within yourself. It's not within my blog. You can find those answers from within. So anyways, <laughs> I've completely lost track of my outro. That little aside just really threw me off. So um, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.